I get into the office a bit earlier than like most other people actually. I boot up my computer, I make tea. I need that in the morning, it's my coffee. Most of the time I check my emails, check my schedule, and, or before that I start my PC, and then I wait for coffee. The second thing I do is uh, to make coffee for the guys. <laughs> and then I have like around two hours in, until our daily stand-up, and usually for me that's the time to finish up all of the stuff that I left last evening when my brain became too overcrowded. <laughs> And um, that's also the time for me to like write down all the stuff I need to ask other people because I'm sure <laughs> whoever will show up is there at 11 a.m. straight. We stand in this room <laughs> all around and everyone just in like a few short sentences talks about what he's done yesterday and then what uh, he's going to do today. But sometimes <laughs> all the coders just stand there and be like, bugs, yes, more bugs. <laughs> We do this because there are sometimes cases where someone else knows, okay, I need to talk to this person when they work on this feature. And so nothing gets lost in this process. No, no one works on a task that um, needs input from someone else. I like the most that I, I kind of have like this, this complete overview um, of everything that's going on in the team, uh, working with all the departments, uh, helping them all to coordinate them, themselves. Um, so I basically I, I, I tap into to every aspect of the whole production. To do a game like Desperados, um, you start with a pre-production. Pre-production means that we think about okay, what what uh, is is the game going to be about? So what's what's the story? Uh, what are the characters? Um, what's going to be uh, the levels, the journey that we have? And at this point, uh, it's already possible that we think about different scenarios for the different levels. And after pre-production is done, we, we start into, into the production. Um, so basically, we're going into, into Unity, which is the game engine that, that the game is being built on. The workflow is like this. I, I get um, the block out from the level design department. Uh, they focus on the functionality and the setups. And then I'm the intersection to the art department, I try to make it look good, to make it look natural, to um, yeah, create believable environments. My job encompasses quite some different uh, tasks like uh, texture, uh, terrain texture creation mostly. Um, I also paint the terrains uh, by hand. Um, I do place most of the assets uh, in the game. Um, I make up interesting environmental stories, uh, what could have happened here, why does this look the specific way it looks right now. Uh, we even have a guy over here who got killed by a lorry at some point, uh, that was my idea too. Just small things that make the environment believable and fun to look at. Obstacle still sitting there, boss. I'm the narrative director, so my job is to bring the story together with, with writing, with uh, motion capturing, with voice acting, with effects, with music. We, we are there from a very early stage, like uh, selecting which levels are going to be there. In case of the bridge level, it was like we knew it was going to be centered around this bridge you had to blow up. We, we try to sequence things, try to build the, the story frame around it, and then when the next step comes with level design, when you have the actual level geometry and all that, and I'm, I'm spotting where can dialogue happen, what dialogue has to happen, where are the characters in the story, what kind of developments do I want. I have to include more things like, you know, stuff that's not actually in the story, stuff that's more like, we're introducing this feature here, we want dialogue to happen there because you pick up a... Uh, a a new item and the characters to say, ah, I'm going to use this in, in that way. And then we have a script for the level, basically. And that's the process for, for every level. I keep that down in my locked up type. Yeah, don't you worry. Locks and me are all dance partners. So we snatch the dynamite and head back to the bridge. We set the dynamite and then find some cover. I'll save a bullet so I can light her up from afar. Then it's curtains, ladies and gentlemen. As a game designer, and especially in the director position, you work with everyone. Like you, I talk a lot to the artists about 
level stuff or, or how we, something should look or from a game design standpoint um, or give them feedback and receive feedback from them regarding our levels and pass it on to the level designers. I talk a lot with the programmers um, when it comes to implementing features or when they have questions. Like usually people come up with questions about anything in the game. So how is this supposed to work? Why is this that way? And that's stupid. Change that and stuff like that. And then I have to react to that. So. Uh, you talk a lot with, with everyone, basically, on the team. I don't really have a job title, it's I guess. Programmer with focus on tool sets, basically, mostly, I guess. Yeah. It emerged when we started developing the things and which coder had the free time to focus on which features. So it's like, I do tools and doors and terrain, and it's like, <laughs> mostly because those are the parts that somebody needed to work on and I had the time and it's all the programmers are just basically have the title of programmer and focus on some specific um, areas of the game. Most of the stuff that is level specific actually gets implemented by the level designers and we try to make all the code and all the logic broad enough to be able to like cover most cases. I mean, there is some special stuff, but... Yeah, especially because we, I mean, we worked on, on Shadow Tactics beforehand and we have a, had a very broad toolset from that even, and then we expanded it more for Desperado. So that there is a lot of, of things we can do already. So there, the level designers don't need to request that many more features. And then after that, like for me, there's this process where I try to plan everything out and then encounter like at least five special cases where nobody ever thought about any of them. <laughs> and then there's this question of, uh, could I be sure that we will never... Oh, no, I can't. I have to support this because I know if I don't, <laughs> then at least at least one out of those five cases will be requested <laughs> a month later. Stick to the plan. Everyone remember the plan. We'll see. The last thing in the evening I do is... Turn everything off and go home. Well, nothing more than shutting down my PC, <laughs> you know? Fuck that shit, it's too late. And I'm just in one minute, I'm just out, 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 and then I, I, I go out. Like I have two different kinds of evenings. There's the one where something that I did actually works. And then it's like, I hit the button, it works. It is the perfect time to go home. <laughs> but more, more often it's like, nope, I cannot deal with this anymore. I'm going to write down all of the stuff that I need to deal with. And I'm just going to 